and <laughs> the name of the page. You're live. What is your team? You're live. Good evening. I am Tandra Rutledge, the moderator of our conversation tonight, leading the charge, a conversation with the Illinois Juneteenth Committee. This panel discussion is part of an ongoing conversation that started on June 19, 2020, by the organization formerly known as the Forest Park Juneteenth Family Pool Party Committee. On that day, committee members, including Marjorie Adams Clark, Buzz McBride, and myself, released our Juneteenth short film, Hope of Juneteenth, that can be found on our website, whatisjuneteenth.com. In our inaugural conversation, we interviewed U.S. Congressman Danny Davis, Illinois Senate Majority Leader Kimberly Lightford, Illinois State Rep Emmanuel Chris Welch, Mayors Katrina Thompson of Broadview, Andre Harvey of Bed Bellwood, Edwina Perkins of Maywood, Rory Hoskins of Forest Park, and many others who all reflected on America race, and Juneteenth. Today, as we continue the conversation, we are joined by special guests, Lucretia Burtz, Marjorie Adam Clark, Torrance Gardner, Stephanie Taylor, and Forest Park Mayor, Rory Hoskins. Before we start our conversation this evening, we want to take this moment to acknowledge the passing of two civil rights icons, Representative John Lewis, and Reverend C.T. Vivian. They began their freedom walk in 1959 and through sit-ins, freedom marches, including the March on Washington, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, they helped change America. And as we continue the fight for freedom and justice, we take heed to the words of Representative John Lewis to get in trouble good trouble that is and good trouble is what the illinois juneteenth committee is planning to do the illinois juneteenth committee is a grassroots and community-led initiative focused on juneteenth or freedom day in illinois the committee aims to unite juneteenth organizers from all across the state to frame our conversation this evening we will first look at a facebook video Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker posted on June 19th. Juneteenth, June 19th, also known as Emancipation Day or Freedom Day, commemorates the announcement by a Union general in Galveston, Texas, that the Civil War was now finally over and slavery was ended. That was in 1865, two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, ordering the freedom of all enslaved people in the Confederacy. Two and a half years. 155 years later, our work to fight injustice against black men, women, and children continues. We've not yet become the nation that we aspire to be. Juneteenth takes on an even more solemn significance today, as our nation contends with the recent murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, as well as those of Trayvon Martin, Laquan McDonald, and Eric Garner, and of black trans women like Dominique Remy Bells. Whether as acts of police brutality or of private citizens acting as vigilantes, too many have been killed tragically because our nation has for too long refused to contend with the systemic racism that permeates our institutions. This Juneteenth comes as hundreds of thousands of protesters across the nation, from Chicago to East St. Louis, to Springfield to Champaign, and dozens of towns in between have taken to the streets to call for justice and change. And through protest and policy, we're going to make that change. From genuine criminal justice reform to a fundamentally reimagined vision of policing to sustained investment in black communities, we will build an Illinois full of justice, equity, and opportunity for all our people. 
I encourage all Illinoisans to take today to reflect on our history, our future, and the actions we can take individually and collectively to truly build ourselves into the equitable nation of our ideals, a land of freedom and opportunity. To build an Illinois full of justice and equity. That's our goal and the goal of the Illinois Juneteenth Committee. Today, Juneteenth is recognized in 47 states and the District of Columbia, according to the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. On January 1st, 1980, Texas became the first state to recognize Juneteenth as an official state holiday. Hawaii, North Dakota, and South Dakota are the only states without an official rec recognition. In 2020, New York's governor signed an executive order making Juneteenth a state holiday for state employees, and Virginia's governor proposed making it a state holiday there. In Illinois, on June 19th, Governor J.B. Pritzker declared that he would work with the Illinois General Assembly to make Juneteenth a state holiday. And so we decided to host this conversation today, July 19th, 30 days after that declaration, to hold ourselves accountable and continue the momentum in Illinois to make Juneteenth a state holiday. Lucretia, let's start with you. We are here today because of your vision to unite Juneteenth advocates across the state. Can you talk about why this is important from both a state and national perspective? Share with us as well your work with the Black Remembrance Project, as well as the Juneteenth campaign you led right here in Chicago. Thank you so much for hosting this, Sandra. Um, I'll start with talking about Juneteenth as a national holiday. Juneteenth is American history, and Juneteenth holds a special heart for Black Americans in this country because it is, a, it is the only time in this nation where it recognizes the injustice around slavery in this nation. And this is an injustice that unfortunately our entire nation has to deal with, and we have not been dealing with it, with it as a nation. We continue to put under the rug the brutal history of slavery in the United States. And so um, considering that last year, 2019, marked the 400 year anniversary of black people coming to this country, forced here, kidnapped here as slaves, um, projects such as you know the 1619 project from the New York Times have all elevated um, this and unearthed this, this history that this country still hasn't reckoned with. And I think that it is only right that this country, after 400 years of, you know, slavery, it recognizes the injustice. And it is not a coincidence that the Black Lives Matter movement, that there is also a, a movement around, you know, changing Columbus Day, right, to deal with the history of uh, the atrocities and colonizations that happen in this nation. Um, so I would say that Juneteenth needs to be recognized because it is an important part of our history. And also I think that black American descendants of slavery feel that after 400 years, there needs to be a reckoning in this country around slavery in particular. Um, in terms of the state holiday recognition, there are actual soldiers from Illinois that fought in Galveston, Texas. And I think, that a lot of people think of Juneteenth as a Texan sort of tradition, but that's not true. Just like um, the 4th of July, they, the last battle that was fought, fought in this nation for its independence, we still celebrate that as a nation, that the, the last frontier around slavery was in Galveston, Texas. So we all should celebrate it regardless of if the last battle was fought in Texas. So I, I wanna point that out. But even so, in Illinois, the fact that we participated in Juneteenth um, in terms of liberating other enslaved people, we should uplift that and we should recognize that here. And we are the land of Lincoln, right? Abraham Lincoln was the president that emancipated the slaves. So if we are, if we want to hold true to um, 
you know, the people here in Illinois we should uplift Juneteenth in particular. And not only just uplift it and recognize it like the way that it's recognized now. Um, I don't know if people know this, but in Illinois, the third Saturday of June is recognized as Juneteenth. And that adds to the disproportionate ways that this holiday is celebrated um, across the nation. Some people recognize it on June 19, and some people like Illinois, some states like Illinois recognize it on the third Saturday. And I don't think that that's fair. I think it should be equally celebrated, equally recognized. Um, so there's that. And in terms of the labor that I've, that's been done here in Chicago, uh, the Black Remembrance Project, which includes myself, um, my co-chair, Lynette um, Sims, Linda Jennings. Also, uh, we had support from Malik Lee and um, a couple of other people. Um, we decided that we wanted to push our mayor in Chicago to make, and rec to make Juneteenth an official holiday and recognize it across the city. Um, so we have been pushing for that since last year. And this year we have, you know, we have 41 aldermen who signed on to the legislation. We are now waiting on the mayor to push forward. And the mayor of um, Chicago has said that the holiday is too expensive. And in, in, in regards to that, um, actually, I, I'll stop here because I think that our legislative uh, support can talk more about what we are proposing around this question of the cost for Juneteenth, particularly for Chicago. Thank you very much, Lucretia. We hear your passion and your advocacy. And we thank you for leading um, us with the Illinois Juneteenth Committee. I want to now bring in Torrance Gardner. Torrance, can you talk about your role in making Juneteenth a holiday in the city of Chicago? Definitely, and thank you for having me. I'm, I've been uh, very happy to be a part of this committee um, as of uh, this recently. So uh, how I am involved directly, uh, Lucretia came to our office. I work uh, for Alder Woman Maria Haddon here in the 49th Ward. I'm the Director of Economic and Community Development. Um, so when this came across my desk, I, I saw this as something that uh, I owed a true debt to, being a Black person. Um, and also being part of a civil rights tradition in my own family. Um, so I thought this would be uh, a great measure to really uh, make not only just uh, America, but particularly our city uh, aware and paying the true debts and recognition of the black contributions in this city of Chicago that I'm from and that we are from, really Lucretia. Um, so when that came across my desk, we, uh, me and my coworker, Tiffany Liner, put words together in the legislation to recognize and hold that truth of our contributions as also being the founder of the city, John Baptiste Point DuSable, to yeah. the great mayor Harold Washington, um, to many of the other, uh, like right now, Mary Lurie Lightfoot regarding her being a black lesbian, and just many of the contributions that have been brought from all different types of viewpoints, but from the black community that made such a mark on this city. So when we, when we drafted it, that was coming from the, the souls of black folks, in the sense I would say, like WB Du Bois. And from that, we drafted it in January, around December, and then COVID hit. And it was like, wow, how are we gonna just survive, right? And then all of a sudden, as we all saw, George Floyd got killed. And then the protest happened. And then Lucretia and I were talking again a little bit like, I was like, Lucretia, we're still having, still having struggles trying to get it through legislation. Even though we have 41 aldermen, still facing obstacles to get it to be voted on. And then Lucretia and I got together along with all the women had in, my coworkers and my partner here. Um, we started the campaign that like, I think Lucretia that weekend, my girlfriend put up Facebook frames up, made a hashtag in Chicago and we pushed it out. And it became over 5,000 signatures in like three or four days, multiple over 30 to 40 endorsements from, from uh, corporations. So um, we were able to use that momentum to make Juneteenth a resolution that got passed this past June. So that's what we've done. I've done thus far being part of working with Lucretia. And Torrance, can you say a little bit about the floating holiday proposal that we have uplifted? Thank you. Currently at the status we are in, we are still talking to the mayor's team to work to now get an official vote as we do not for long see any budgetary reasons due to what is called a flexible holiday 
structured schedule. So flexible holiday structure schedule basically means if you have a total set here, like we have 12 holidays, you can turn three to four, how many you like as a city into optional days an employee could take off. So they can take off say President's Day and they wanna make Lincoln's birthday optional. So it allows us wiggle room to add holidays that have not traditionally been recognized. And that's also partly the purpose of a flexible holiday structure is to allow for different religions to honor their, uh, what they do on those days that aren't Christian based. So it fits perfectly in this particular situation. That's what we're pushing. That way there will be no, be no budgetary issues involved. Thank, thank you very much, Torrance, for sharing that. And thank you again, and Lucretia, for the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I was struck by what you said uh, about this being part of our soul and the very soul of a people, and the soul of a nation. And I often say that the work that we do is soul work. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Now I'd like to um, just acknowledge we have uh, some awardees here tonight. Um, both Lucretia and Mayor Hoskins were giving, given an award this year, 2020, by the Abolitionist Institute in February for all of your work in commemorating the end of slavery in the United States and the importance of education around freedom and slavery and racial justice. So congratulations to both Lucretia and Mayor Hoskins on that award that you received this year. And so moving on to Mayor Hoskins, you first organized Juneteenth celebration in Forest Park back in 2009 when you were village commissioner at that time. But your roots to Juneteenth extend back to growing up in Galveston, Texas. Can you talk a little bit about why making Juneteenth a state holiday in Illinois is important to you and the next steps as you see it from a legislative perspective to make that happen. Sure, Tandra, and thank you all for uh, having me on the call today and for organizing this. Um, you mentioned that Lucretia and I were awardees. Uh, Alderman Haddon also got the uh, award from the Abolition Institute, so we don't want to leave her out. But uh, in terms of the Illinois holiday, um, Al Edwards, uh, who is sometimes known as the father of Juneteenth, was a state representative in Texas. Uh, he represented a district in Houston. And it was Al Edwards who conceived of a national holiday when he introduced legislation in the Texas uh, House of Representatives in 1979. That bill was signed uh, June 7th, 1979 and Juneteenth was first uh, celebrated as an official holiday in uh, June 1980. Um, now being from Galveston and, and watching uh, Representative Edwards come to Galveston to participate in various functions, uh, I had a chance to interact with him over the years, um, particularly when I became an adult. And I read a lot of things that represent, Representative Edwards wrote and one of the things that he was very proud of was the fact that it was a formal holiday and that it had gone through the legislative process. Uh, he felt that the fact that all of the Texas House members had a chance to vote on making Juneteenth a full state holiday paid was very significant because of, of the processes and the protocols involved. The same applied to the Senate. And as I mentioned, it was signed by a governor it was actually signed into law by a Republican governor. So it was done on a bipartisan basis. And Al Edwards wrote that, you know, all the representatives of the people of Texas had a chance to sign off on that. And for him, that made it extra significant. So for us to move legislation through the Illinois General Assembly, I believe has the same importance. Now my state senator is Illinois Majority Leader Kimberly Lightfoot. And uh, I met with Senator Lightford via Zoom recently. And while there are two House bills that have been introduced, those have been referred to the Rules Committee. One was, represent, was uh, introduced by Representative LaShawn Ford, the other by Representative Thaddeus Jones. Senator Lightford, she 
has filed a companion bill in this, and so did State Senator Napoleon Harris. Um, so she's indicated that there is support from the governor and that when they reconvene, they'll decide exactly which piece of legislation to move. And so she expects it to be supportive, supported, excuse me, and to be signed probably during the veto session in November. Well, thank you, Mayor Hoskins. That is certainly um, great news to hear and it's really uh, forms the um, purpose of the Illinois Juneteenth Committee and the work that we've all been doing individually and the work we're yet to do collectively. So thank you for providing us with that update. I would like to uh, bring Marjorie into the conversation now. Um, Marjorie, you're from Forest Park and yes. you've worked with Mayor Hoskins for a number of years. And education about Juneteenth has always been important, important part of the celebration. Can you talk a little bit about how you and the committee in Forest Park have worked to engage all citizens around Juneteenth? Okay, so um, let me first start out by saying that Juneteenth, as we've all agreed, is an American holiday. And I feel like Juneteenth is an opportunity. It, to me, it's more than even just a holiday. It's, it's, it's an opportunity to create space where people can have some of those difficult conversations. So one of the things that um, I'd like to mention do, while we were having this Facebook conversation, one of the um, people that I communicate with said that she's created um, 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 a, a slide presentation to bring about uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge for her business so that people can start having those difficult conversations in her business. So, so Juneteenth has the opportunity to create a space, safe space um, um, for all of us as Americans because we haven't reckoned with the racial issue. So um, in Forest Park, uh, uh, one of the things that we've done is we've created a four page educational booklet because what we found was a lot of people really don't understand what Juneteenth is. So we traditionally have that available to people at our events. Um, additionally, um, back to what you said, Lucretia, about um, Abraham Lincoln being the son of Illinois, one of our neighbors looks a lot like Abraham Lincoln. And so he gets dressed up at our four hour events and he recites um, a lot of the Emancipation Proclamation. And it is so fun for the young people when they see him. And he rides his bike all over Forest Park. It's really fun to watch. Additionally, um, this year, uh, we created a short film called Hope of Juneteenth. Um, because of the pandemic, we weren't really able to do a lot of uh, the things, initiatives that we have in the uh, Forest Park community. So we decided to, uh, to create this film as an homage to state, Texas State Representative Al Edwards, who passed away um, this past April. So another giant of the civil rights movement we pay homage to. Um, and this film has been, a, we, um, we've been able to really expand uh, the audience as it relates to Juneteenth and the education possibility as it relates to Juneteenth. It, we've gotten amazing feedback. Uh, one of the local businesses hosted its first Juneteenth celebration for its uh, employees. Additionally, I, we've been getting feedback from people all over the community because they want to be part of the solution. They want to have those difficult conversations. They want to create curriculums. They want to create safe spaces for people to have difficult conversations. Um, people I found uh, want to, um, are looking optimistic um, as it relates to hope. You know, one of the things that came out of the film uh, was, was the idea that, you know, we can do this. If we come together, we, we can have that conversation. We can find a way of common ground. Uh, uh, and so I'm really excited about the whole idea of Juneteenth being this apex where, where, where education and creativity and soul work can come together and bring about that racial healing that we need. Um, and so I'm really excited to be part of this uh, 
this initiative to bring about everybody from all over the state so that we can continue that momentum. Oh, and one more thing I have to shout out, the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation, because they have really been doing the work over the last 20 years. So th they've been instrumental in helping us as well. Absolutely, thank you, Marjorie. And I'm glad you mentioned that because just like with the national organization and the other um, you know, civil rights heroes and icons and people who've been working, we're standing on their shoulders. So it's, it's important for us to recognize that we didn't get here by ourselves, that lots of people for a number of years have paved the way to make it possible, right? You're talking about hope and optimism for us to be right where we are in this moment. So thank you for acknowledging, acknowledging that. Wanna to turn to Stephanie Taylor right now. Stephanie, you have a nonprofit, Community Development Sustainable Solutions and you coordinated Juneteenth celebrations in East St. Louis, Illinois for many, many years. And this year, Juneteenth took on a very different meaning in St. Clair County. So please share with us what happened. Okay, absolutely, and thank you. And um, again, I wanna thank everyone on the call who's given their time this evening. Um, I wanted to start off with, um, the national organization and you know just the work for the Independence Day legislation and our mission to bring all Americans together to celebrate our common bond of freedom through the recognition, observance, education, and historic preservation of Juneteenth in America. And that is exactly what um, we do together and what we've been doing here in the 114th district um, of Illinois. Um, just like now on the call, you know, uh, being last, East St. Louis and Southern Illinois is normally last. We're the last to be thought of. We're the last when it comes to increases in um, minimum wage. Uh, we're still at $10 whereas Chicago has been raised to 14. Um, so my organization works for equitable solutions. We want solutions that we can all live with. It's not just for someone, it's for everybody. Um, so I, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen real quick. I wanted to um, just bring up some of the things as it relates to CDSS here. So hold on. So um, Juneteenth East St. Louis, that is our organization. That is how we advocate for the holiday here in our specific city. But we did not stop at our particular city. We moved out to every municipality, every single borough around us because it is about education. It is about engagement. It is about empowerment. It also is about diversity, but we can't get to talking about diversity until we start rightly educating and we look at equitable and sustainable solutions. Um, so again, on our Facebook page, um, we make sure that we honor Ronald Doc Myers that you see there in the corner. Um, we all, as a significant, uh, as a way to illustrate our freedom and our free spirit. So each year, whatever year we're on, 155, we're letting all of those balloons go in honor of the holiday. And we make sure that we have youth engaged to get that done because it's important to educate them on the significance. You don't always want to let go balloons because someone died you can let go of balloons because someone has the right to live. So it's also about changing the narrative that we see. Um, also, again, you see Juliana Stratton and you see um, our state representative, Latoya Greenwood. Latoya Greenwood keeps her boots on the ground here in the 114th district. So she does attend every single one of our 
annual Juneteenth celebrations, which includes a motorcade, which you see here that was featured in our uh, News Democrat, where we went down, we rode the whole 89 blocks of our city and we sported that flag, flew it high, make sure that people are aware of it. We have on our Juneteenth shirts um, right there. That's our Juneteenth King. He is the youngest pastor in the state of Illinois. He started like Jesus at 12 and 13. So he's always there to represent with us. Um, once we got done there, we went down to our municipal building and there we raised the flag. What you see here is the proclamation because the work that we're doing, we're like the blog. <laughs> for a lack of better terms, but we're going to make sure that we get equitable solutions. We're going to make sure that we work on strategies that bring light to the outdated laws that need to be changed, to the spirit of what President Lincoln did, who was a lawyer and they could not change his words, bless his heart. So we need to honor that. And so we move through each area and we've been getting proclamations to ensure that we solidify that they honor this date because we've got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do to push and to support J.B. Pritzker and getting the job done. So again, here you see um, Juliana Stratton who came down in 2019 and talked about her whole economic strategy and her inclusive strategy and how she was going to push for legislation to make Juneteenth become a state holiday. So I'm glad that it's on J.B. Pritzker's mouth because she followed through with her words. And I love Lieutenant Governor Stratton because as she says, if you want to go alone, if you, if you don't want to go nowhere, then you go alone. But if you want to go far, then you go together. And I believe that. And so that's why I'm glad that we have all come together and formulated this committee because it matters a lot because a fist makes a powerful punch that can move mountains and together we can move mountains. Uh, community development, sustainable solutions is state of Illinois pillars of excellence for our work when we look at outdated systems, when we look at structural racism. That is why we take on the Juneteenth initiative as well as other issues like the school to prison pipeline. Because again, we're talking about equity. We're talking about outdated systems. We're talking about hidden history and we need to uncover our history. We need to talk about the, uh, the regiment out of Illinois made up of all black volunteer soldiers who went with General Granger to free the slaves. That is very important. We need to talk about one of the gentlemen right now, Mr. Nance, who's buried under a parking lot right now. So that's one of the agendas that we plan on tackling as we move forward with this initiative here. So I just wanted to bring light to that. Um, next, I would like to just show you a bit about um, community development, sustainable solutions. And I'm sure you can see this screen here. Let me move that out of the way. Okay. And this is just some of our initiatives here. Okay, again, that's our proclamation as the uh, pillars of excellence for the state of Illinois, because we work for a safe and thriving community. We believe everyone has the right to thrive in their community. Part of that is looking at outdated laws. So we work with kids, we hold meetings in the community, we look at our blighted community. And we look at changing the laws, we work on things like the census, so that we can get equitable disbursement of funding. We're smart green, we're grassroots, and we are sustainable. Okay, so thank you very much. I just wanted the opportunity to share a bit about who we are and what we are doing. Thank you. And thank you very much, Stephanie. And, you know, I think that together, you said you quoted uh, Gov uh, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, and together we will get this done. You know, we, uh, we are certainly going to move forward and I'm excited, honestly, in just this brief conversation of what we all bring to this movement and this effort. 
and the organization formerly known as the Forest Park Juneteenth Family Pool Party Committee, that's a mouthful, wants to create opportunities and safe spaces to have these conversations. And just here within this conversation, there are more conversations that we can have about the work that is happening around and throughout the state of Illinois. Because now, I, forgot, I forgot to tell you, I do apologize graciously that St. Clair County now recognizes Juneteenth as a paid holiday. So we thank our St. Clair County chairman for moving mountains and seeing us in the work that we're all doing together. And thank you for um, adding that, Stephanie, because as you started, you said Southern Illinois is the last, the last, but look at this, St. Clair County making Juneteenth a paid holiday has stepped up and is leading in the front in Illinois. So thank you for your efforts um, in St. Clair County and we definitely are gonna continue these conversations. We wanna thank Stephanie and all of our panelists for your time and your advocacy here in Illinois. The work of the Illinois Juneteenth Committee um, is to unite these efforts, the Juneteenth efforts from across the state. We have three primary goals and you heard about them this evening. To advocate for June 19th to be recognized as a state holiday in Illinois, Secondly, to educate and engage all citizens around Juneteenth. And lastly, to support Juneteenth celebration throughout the state. If you are interested in getting involved in our efforts, you can do so right now. You can sign a petition to make Juneteenth a state holiday in Illinois at whatisjuneteenth.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, you can follow at Illinois IL Juneteenth Committee, IL Juneteenth Committee. Follow us on Facebook to join the conversation and the advocacy efforts of the Illinois Juneteenth Committee. Now, don't try to hide from us because we're coming for you. We're, we're, we're building a united organization and a united group. So you might as well just go ahead to, you know, at IL Juneteenth Committee and let us know that you're interested. Also, we wanna hear how you celebrated Juneteenth in the past and plans you might even have to celebrate in the future. And you can share that with us on, um, at What is Juneteenth on Facebook. And please, 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 whenever you share, we are asking that you hashtag What is Juneteenth and hashtag Illinois Juneteenth. So as we close today, we want to hear from, we're gonna hear from Representative John Lewis in his own words, in a recent masterclass interview on OWN, as he, calls, as he calls each of us to resist because our fight for freedom and justice is not over. I wanna once again, thank our panelists. I wanna thank those of you who have tuned in to watch, watch us this evening. If you have a question or comment that we didn't get to, we certainly will make sure that we reach out to you after this, but we wanna pay homage to Representative John Lewis and the work that he's done. So on behalf of the Illinois Juneteenth Committee, we say good evening and until next time. Each one of us has the ability to resist not to be quiet. We have to be brave. We have to be bold. We have to use our constitutional rights. If it means a march, a silent walk, a sit in, a sit down, or maybe signing a petition, writing a letter of voting, we have to be engaged, all of us as members of the human family, as citizens of this country. There are forces that want to take us back to another place. And we're saying we're not going back. We've come too far. We made too much progress to stop now or to turn around. That's I feel it is 
part of my obligation, my mission, my mandate, to reach as many young people as possible. The fight is not over. We have to continue to fight. And sometimes you have to fight some of the old battles over and over again for the next generation. For generation yet unborn. You too can make a contribution and you must. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.